What's going on guys? Short video for you today. I've got Michael here. He's part of our pre-production crew and we're just going to go over how to light a set. It's pretty simple, but hopefully it helps a lot of people out. What's up guys? I'm Michael. I'm a videographer here at Hit Network. I um, film a lot of things every day. So I'm going to walk you through real quick just a pretty standard setup for one of the sets we have here at the studio. And it's a good setup to have if you want to film anything in your own, if you're setting up a studio yourself, even if it's just in your house, whatever. This is a good kind of lighting setup to use for whenever you want to film anything. Have it just give it that professional look. For a space like this, typically now we have a channel here called Meta Money and we film all the Meta Money videos here, but we also film a lot of other content in this studio space. Um, but this is a good space for if you're doing any kind of talking head um, kind of shots. So a lot of times I'll sit here and they'll review a product and they're talking to the camera while they're reviewing the product. So we have two lights set up at this studio because of the fact that we have two people on camera. So we like having kind of even lighting on both of them gives us a little more width on our lighting. Right. Um, you typically want your key lights to be, you know, you want them to be not overpowering, but obviously you want to give, your kind of focus is going to be to make sure just that the skin tones are, are um, exposed properly. So whatever setup you have at home, you know, your brightnesses are going to vary depending on your lights and, you know, how close you are to your lights, how much room you have, that kind of stuff. I think these we have, these are, these are uh, Aperture 300Ds. So we mm -hmm. have two 300Ds on this set. So these act as our kind of our key and fiddle lights, kind of simultaneously. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to go a, a more of a, a typical like at home setup, if you're trying to film, I don't know, say you're a gamer or say you're just trying to film content from your your office or whatever. Um, typically, you would maybe maybe want to have you know a single light setup where you have one light as your key light. If you're filming something at home, um, if you don't have a lot of lights to work with, having one good key light. Um, is kind of a must-have. That's kind of gonna be your first thing off check, to check off your checklist in terms of lighting. Um, I want to say a key light. A key light refers to the main light that's on your subject. So there's a few different types of lighting. There's key lighting, there's fill lighting, and there's backlighting. Those are three main types of sources that you want to kind of keep in, keep in mind whenever your lighting is set. Your key light, as I said, is going to be your main light that is used to light your subject. A fill light is going to be whatever light you use to kind of knock in any shadows. So let's say you have a key light set up and it's about 45 degrees to your subject's right and 45 degrees up in the air, which is about typically where you want a key light to be. Yep. Um, that's sometimes going to cast shadows on the opposite side of your face, right? So if my key light is on my right side, it's going to cast shadows on my left side. A fill light would be a good option to put kind of on the left side then, not as bright as your key light because you don't want it to be washed out. Um, and flat, but just enough to kind of make your shadows not quite be as harsh. So that's kind of what we have here. They're, these both kind of act as key lights and fill lights. We don't have one that's specifically meant to be the main key light, but they both kind of act as keys and fill. So this, this light right here is a good key for whoever's standing on the right side, with this light over here being a good fill for whoever's on this side, and then this light over here is essentially keying for whoever's on this side, and this is kind of filling over on this side. So they kind of have, these These lights kind of have dual purposes. So once you have your key and your fill lights kind of figured out, um, the next step is to kind of look at your backlighting. Now backlighting is where things kind of get, you can really add that professional look. So we have our main backlight right here, which is actually pointed not in the correct direction right now. We need to adjust that again. <laughs> um, but a backlight is literally a light that is, does exactly what it says it does, which is that it lights you from the back. Okay, and what that does is it kind of adds depth to your image. So like right now, if you had just two lights on you here, you'll see actually in a second, we're gonna kind of show you what the different lights look like when they're on. And then when we're gonna add a key light, and then we'll add the fill, and then we'll add the backlight to kind of show you what all the different um, stages of lighting, how they can each improve your image. So if you don't have a backlight, you can kind of, the image can kind of look flat. There's not a lot of depth, especially between you and your background. So when you put a backlight on, it'll give you a nice little glow around the edge of your body or whoever it is your subject is. And then that's gonna help kind of separate you from the background a little bit, kind of make you stand out more, okay? The last kind of lighting that I guess I'll kind of throw in there is not necessarily a light that's meant for the subject, but more for your background. So we have these two lights here. These are panel lights. I forget what they're called, but they're aperture lights. Um, they will work well with all the other aperture lights we have here in the studio. Um, these are just meant to to light your background. You know, we can change these, change these to a little whatever color we want, um, depending on who's using the set. Each channel kind of has their own like color scheme, so. Typically, whenever a channel is using a set, they're gonna change the colors to whatever their color scheme is. Again, just to recap, you have your main three sources of light, which are gonna be your key light, which is your main light on your subject, your fill light, which is the light that is used to kind of knock down shadows and, and add any light kind of anywhere else you want it to be, 
and then your backlight, which is gonna really separate your subject from the background. And you'll see some examples right here. All right, so to give you all a quick idea, here's what it looks like with our backlight turned on, or you call it a hair light. Now when we turn the key light on, you'll kind of see how it really gives the subject some good lighting here. So here's what it looks like with the key light on, but you'll notice we're getting some shadows on the our right side of his face, but his left side. A little bit of shadow there, and I'm really not a fan of that. Unless you're going for a more dramatic look, then it can look good. But if you really want to give someone good flattering lighting, you typically are not going to want to make it super dramatic, especially for professional applications and whatnot. So now when he turns the fill light on, you'll see how the fill isn't going to be quite as bright as the key, but it's just going to add just a little bit of something there, and boom. Now I've got his whole face is exposed properly. Um, you can definitely tell that the key light is a little brighter, but that is entirely intentional because you want to add a little bit of depth there. If you have both your key and your fill lights um, with similar brightness, you're going to end up just kind of washing their face out and then it's going to be a little too flat. So I like having a little bit of depth there. So you can see there is still a little more shadow on the right side of his face there, uh, but it definitely is looking a little better. So with that hair light going on as well, you can see how we've kind of separated him from the background a little bit and it's just kind of gives it a good professional look. So that gives you an idea of kind of how to light a professional set um, or even if you're lighting a set at home, either way.